Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This video is a comments on a few of your comments and it's actually topic focused. Recently, I shared a video to help you through a visualization to connect for yourself with Freddie Mercury. Now, I have also done a connection visualization that is guided for you to connect with Prince in the afterlife. If you are interested in connecting with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife for yourself or Prince, go ahead and check out those playlists, Freddie Mercury and Prince. Now, I wanna to respond to some of the great comments and some really good questions that I've received, particularly pertaining to the Freddie Mercury video. Now, this is true for anyone that you want to connect with in the afterlife. It takes practice. And by that, I don't mean there's a perfection that you have to achieve or a certain perfect alignment that has to be in existence in order for you to actually attain a connection. No, by practice, I mean do it multiple times. Don't just do it once or twice or three times. Do it multiple times because you will have different experiences. Sometimes it'll be awesome and you'll really feel the connection. Other times, nah, maybe not so much. So I wanna talk about that in this particular video. The other thing I wanna address is someone specifically asked me, what does Freddie Mercury think about my braces? For some of you, you may have been watching my vlog on my other YouTube channel that I have. It's a more casual YouTube channel that I talk about all things intuitive. And you know, some of you, that I got clear braces. Now, in most of my channeling videos, I take them out so you really have to be looking closely in order to even tell that I have had braces in, but today I chose to leave them in. I've gotten sometimes random, odd uh, comments about that in general anyway. For example, like I breathe too much or I swallow too loudly and that I should move my microphone or simply not talk at all. And when doing a channel or a YouTube channel, usually audio is required. And a microphone like this is needed. It works much better to use a microphone than it does to use the camera phone because, camera microphone, because the audio is just so much better. It's more clear. Now, <laughs> so get used to my weird noises that are gonna happen if I happen to be channeling which I probably won't be usually. I probably will pop out my braces right now. I have them in. I also have rubber bands, which means it's helping the alignment of my jaw. And some of you may be like, well, why did you do that? Why do you have to change the way you look? You know, that kind of a thing. I've gotten those kinds of questions too. And I'm like, you guys, it's a, <sighs> there's a lot of reasons why I got clear braces. And just so you're aware, I've been thinking about them for a couple of years because I have an issue with my right side of my jaw because my jaw is down and way out of alignment and it creates pain. So I decided finally to just do it, to go ahead, spend the money on myself, not the kids, not anything else, but me so that my teeth and my jaw and my mouth will be healthy. <laughs> so that's why I did it. And interesting, I had already done the research and already committed to creating a payment plan so that I could do clear braces for myself prior to ever connecting with Freddie Mercury. It was like a couple of months later is when I connected with Freddie Mercury. So I decided this right after I actually started, before even, because I started looking into it in January 2018. And so I decided it before even Above Life Channel. So this has been in the works for a while. It's a self-care thing. All right, so we're gonna ask Freddie what he thinks about my braces, but I also wanna to talk to you guys and give you a couple of tips about connection. So connection, DIY, do-it-yourself spirit contact is something that is totally possible for you. And that's why I share, I've shared a few, and yes, there will be more to come, videos that are actually audios they are guided visualizations to help give you some experiential learning. I believe here at Above Life Channel that it is all about the experience and your life is what you make it. And so you gotta do it. And if I can provide you with opportunities to experience connection, whether you're watching a channel or whether you're doing it yourself, that is the goal and we have succeeded then. 
in providing you with that opportunity. Now, when I say we, I mean your spiritual healing helpers, your spirit team, your spirit, and mine as well, collaborating to create opportunities for you to experience connection for yourself, all right? Number one goal, you to experience connection. And the best way to experience things is to feel it. You are made wired as a human being to have emotion, to have an awareness of your sensory perceptions and feeling is the best way. That is the first way, the most common way that we as spirit connect with other spirit. Okay, so again, that will take practice, which means it'll, it'll take multiple experiences in order for you to feel as though, yeah, I'm connecting. I am connected, like a state of connection. All right. So that's one response I wanted to give you from some of the comments that I've gotten about the connections. Another one is about your imagination. Like, how do you know? Is it, how do I know? A very specific question was asked and it was, how do I know if it's just my imagination? How do I know? And then what am I supposed to do with this information that I get? Great questions, you guys. Awesome questions. So how do you know it's not your imagination? You don't because not one part of you is doing channeling. Not one part of you is connecting. Even though you're feeling and sensing connection, even when you're just watching the videos that I'm sharing with you when I'm doing connection, you can feel that. You, through a, how do I describe this? Channeling or connecting isn't just through one way of of communicating. It's not going to access just one of your sensory systems. The first one is the experience of the feeling sensing. That's the easiest one sensory because you're built to sense and feel in the heart space. Now, the process of communication and connection does involve your mind. It does because mind pre presents the option for words, which is a language for us to be able to understand the information that we're getting. It's natural to want messages, words, not just a feeling or a sensory thing. That's okay in the beginning, but you want more, you want more. In order to be able to include your mind to formulate words that create language that give you actual messages, like formalized messages that will be recognized by your mind, we've got to utilize the mind. In all our processes, I believe in any spiritual process, we have got to incorporate and utilize the mind to give it some kind of role so it can be a part of the process and not separate from the whole, your whole life you felt separate. I'm a spiritual being and I'm a human being. And it's like, how do I bring all these parts of me together? It is essential in order to be able to do channeling, to order to be able to connect for yourself with your spirit, your own intuition and others, your loved ones, or even famous people that you want to get guidance from. It is essential to utilize all parts of yourself. So your imagination absolutely should be included because imagination is an aspect of your mind. And it is the safe place for your mind to be able to co-create and to translate that which is energy, which is not tangible, which is hard to put into human words. Your imagination can help act as a filter to present the, the energy in a way that you can understand it. So whether you get symbolism or metaphors or music in your head or thoughts that pop into your mind when you're doing a connection exercise like a, a uh, guided visualization to connect, the imagination absolutely should be part of it because why? Your mind is essential in this process. And anybody that feels like it's not, you are on the wrong channel on YouTube. You're on the wrong channel. I'm not the right person to help you understand or to connect or to learn and to grow because your mind is included in the process. Your heart is included in the process. Your energy, your spirit is included in the process. Body, mind, heart, and soul. There are four aspects of who you are. All of these aspects are essential. They are all part of your wholeness. If you degrade or berate or belittle any one aspect of you, your mind, your heart, your soul, or your body, your success, the potential for your success and can true connection and alignment has just completely been downgraded. We have got to, to remember and to know, just to trust the fact that you have all of these assets, your mind, your heart, your spirit, and your body that are intended to work together for your success and your success is happiness, 
contentment, peace, awareness, fulfillment, joy, connection. All right, so yes, your imagination is absolutely part of the process and it's a very safe way for you to be able to play with energy and to help you interpret the information that you are getting. And it's natural, you guys, it's so natural to doubt. It's so natural. We always doubt, I doubt. Are you kidding me? It, it happens, especially if I have a new, well now it's way better, okay? But in the very beginning I was like, what? Why would so-and-so even wanna to talk to me kind of a thing? It's like, it's, I'm just Bridget. I'm just Bridget, you know, <laughs> just channeling and talking, talk, 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 you know? And so <laughs> it's natural to have doubt. That's just a natural thing, you guys. Accept the doubt, give it a big hug, and then keep on practicing, keep on practicing. All right. There are great resources on YouTube. There are great resources from other spiritual teachers, life coaches, energy practitioners, energy healers and such that you can Google up and YouTube up and take a look at and find some other things that help support your journey. Okay. All right. So now the next thing is when you get information, how do you, oh my gosh, what are you supposed to do with it? It feels kind of serious, doesn't it? <laughs> it feels like the, oh my gosh, I just got, I just got information. Oh my gosh. And you're like, what do I do with this? Cause it feels so special, doesn't it? It's awesome. You guys. Well, here's the deal. It's a gift for you. It's a gift for you. You don't have to go start a blog or write a book or scream it from the mountaintops. It's a gift for you. It's for you to so ask yourself when you receive message or information, even if it seems kind of vague or ambiguous or about other people or other things or events that have already happened or that kind of a thing, like world events or anything like that, if it seems kind of big, ask yourself this, Use your discernment and say, what does this have to do with me? What part of this is for me? What message in here is for me to receive? It's all about you. You've got to bring it back to your center core. And the point of you getting that message in that moment, it's for you. There's a part of it that's for you. It's for you. The next thing I would give you is a piece of advice that is very important. Don't take everything seriously. Don't take everything seriously. Because we are energy, it's fluid, it's flexible, it's always flowing, and we are all, we all co-creating this experience in our human life, things can change. So don't get caught up with any kind of gloom and doom kind of things. Just acknowledge the fact that you are a creator and the messages and the information that you're getting, although it might seem heavy at times, or it might seem like it doesn't have a lot to do with you, ask, what does this have to do with me? Find the information, perhaps it's a metaphor, perhaps it's something to give you some kind of a contrast so you can understand something that you're dealing with in your, your human experience, a relationship you have, or a life choice you're making, that kind of a thing, all right? I would also say, because someone else had actually asked me a question about, this has come up a couple times and it's very common, about how do I know if it's, if it's an evil spirit? Or how do I know if it's really an energy, a spirit of, who it says it is. Is it really Freddie Mercury? Is it really, really David Bowie? Is it really Marilyn Monroe? Is it really Prince in the afterlife? Or is it somebody else or some other negative energy coming in to, to trick me? Well, it's natural for you to wonder when you make first, for when you first start to make connection with spirit energy, because you start to it feels awkward a little bit. It doesn't feel natural at first. It's very supernatural. Perhaps that's why they call it supernatural. Eventually it gets normal and it's not that big of a deal, but you'll be able to definitely feel different energies. And as you begin to build a relationship, it's just like any relationship that you have with people. If you think about the time when maybe you started a new job and you went into a new workplace and you really want to like people and you want to like the job and at first everybody's kind of all nice and friendly and polite and then eventually they start talking to you about this employee or somebody else starts complaining about the boss or you start to see people for who they are. <laughs> Good and bad, right? It's the same that goes with energy. And if you're feeling like you're connecting with the spirit, say your goal, your intention is to connect with Prince or to connect with your mom in the afterlife, if at first it doesn't feel like that energy or that person, give it some time. It's your resistance. Your resistance is energy and it's projecting energy into a space to keep a buffer between you and the connection you're trying to make. 
all right? It's not like there's a bunch of evil spirits and they're ready to just swoop in and like come into your life and take your mind over or something. That's so like a Netflix show or something. That's not, that's not how this works. I'm sure there's a lot of wonderful um, creative stories about that kind of thing, but you guys, that's, it's really not that exciting. It's really not that dramatic. Human life is so, so, so dramatic at times. Oh, so dramatic. But the afterlife channeling is not like that. If there is resistance or you feel a little afraid or scared, that's natural. It's just your mind trying to keep a buffer for you from spiritual contact at a level that you're not comfortable with. And it's okay to not be comfortable with it. Then it's asking some whatever, based on your belief system, your current belief system, ask maybe Archangel Michael to come in and help to protect you in your communication. Ask Archangel Gabriel, he's a great communicator. He's so fun with messages and I love him. I just love him, he's great. Or ask if you if you have a particular um, religious figure that is some a part of your um, life experience that you, you know, like a Mother Mary or a Lady Kuan Yin, perhaps, um, or a Pravati or whomever it may be, you can ask or Buddha or Jesus, you can invite them in to help you with a beautiful, positive connection. Okay, don't be shy about doing that. Ask for help. Always ask for help. But don't th recognize when fear is there and it's yours. It's not something that externally that's going to get you. Um, it's, <laughs> it's nine and a half times out of 10, 9.8 times out of 10. That's nothing to worry about. All right. So if there's fear, it's a resistance that you have within yourself. So you've got to give yourself some freedom and gentleness. Gentleness too. Don't just be like, oh, well, I can't do it then because I don't, I'm too scared or whatever. Um, just be open to it. Be open to how you're feeling and allow yourself some time, some space and decide if that's something that you want to do for yourself as well. All right. So I said I was going to ask Freddie about my braces and I will tell you that the day that I got my braces, uh, it was in early March, first week in March, and I was getting ready to go and I wore my purple. I had a Paisley Park shirt that I wore and Prince said, yeah, you're doing right. You're doing right. You know, it's like, you, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Cause I was scared cause I didn't know what to expect. I was like, oh God, I have total dental phobia. I did not want anybody digging in my mouth. I'm super hypersensitive. I already had pain in my jaw. I didn't know how long I was going to have to open my jaw. I was like scared very much dental phobia and anxiety and have not had good experiences in the dentist in the past. So I was scared and Prince said, yeah, you're doing right. You're doing right. He's like, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. I'm like, all right. And then I put on my purple hand warmers that I had and I just, you know, my purple Paisley Park socks and I'm just like, yeah, I got purple energy. I'm good. I'm good. I got this, you know. And then when someone asked me, hey, what does Freddie Mercury think? I thought I, I never really asked him. So I will. All right. So you can probably feel his energy right now while you're watching this video. So we're just going to invite him in for just a, a little quick little chat. Just a little quick Q&A. Real fast one. Oh, I can always feel him right in my heart. He's right at the bottom of my heart. If the heart at the bottom of the heart looks like a little funnel, like a triangle, like a grounding root energy, that's where I feel him usually right there at the base of the heart. He just really connects with the centering energy. Gosh, I love Freddie's energy. Hey, he says hello, love, and he just gives me a kiss. My cheeks, okay, yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> all right, all right. You, you seem so tall right now. He says, I'm usually ta much taller than you, you know, and he's like leaning his head down, kind of. It says, I'm kind of on a stool here as I'm sitting here <laughs> doing, finding a place to record in my house is not easy, you guys. And it's the weekend, see my shirt? Weekend, I love you. Weekend, I love you, love you. This is gonna be a long video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Freddie, what do you think of my braces? <laughs> oh. He says, you have a bionic mouth. It's like you have a bionic mouth. He says, you tell them, tell them, tell them I think they should do whatever they want to do so that they can feel fabulous and beautiful. And he says, you're taking care of yourself. You're taking care of yourself. Of course you have braces. You're taking care of yourself. Of course you do. <laughs> yes, exactly. So he says, I think you should do whatever you want to do. Okay, so let me ask you this then. So a lot of times, famous people, men and women, 
have like plastic surgery and they have cosmetic procedures and people do the um oh what are the shots that people do like fillers and stuff it's funny because my daughter actually said mom you look like kylie jenner because my if you look at me from the side profile because i have these they're like individual trays that i pop in and out they're clear braces because when i pop it in on the top it kind of makes my mouth my lip stick out a little bit so it kind of looks my mom uh, my daughter said mom it looks like you have lip fillers i'm like what I'm like, what are you kidding me? It's so weird, it's awkward, like a, the, the, I feel like I have like, my mouth feels slimy sometimes, like right now I'm like, I'm super conscious of my, the way I pronounce things. My S's sound horrible at times and I like to enunciate, so it's like a thing. I'm a little self-conscious about some of that, but I'm like, hey, it is what it is, whatever. You know, either you're gonna leave a nice comment, you're not, or you're gonna leave a mean one and whatever, I, there's nothing I could do about the comments and the people and what they think, it's whatever, you know? So, but I think, so what do you think about that? Like when people do like lip fillers or, um, I'm trying to think about it, Botox, is that right? Do they still do that? I don't know, that was like an old term that I, I don't know anything about that I, you know, maybe I should look into that actually. Please don't comment on that. I don't need any advice about cosmetic surgery. <laughs> Thing. No, I'm not doing that. I can barely get the braces on you guys. I'm not doing going under the knife or anything. But how, what do you think about that, Freddie? He says, oh, yes. He said, I would have done that. He's like going like this, and he's like pointing at the chin or something. He's going, I would have done that. He said, oh, yes. He said, you know, if it's right for you, it's right for you. He says, oh, you know, beauty, why does beauty have such a price? He says, why does beauty have such a price? He says, oh, yes, I would have. I would have definitely considered that. He says, I would have considered that. He says, you have to remember, the times are very different. And while people were getting, going on, he says, cut open is not a good term. Okay, that's not a good <laughs> translation. Going under the knife, while people were having certain uh, procedures done, he says, it, people did it. They just didn't talk about it. Nobody talked about it then. It was like just a, a kind of a quiet thing that happened and people knew, but people didn't make a, a huge deal of it usually. And, uh, he said it wasn't it wasn't as accessible as it is now accessible and he said and now it's quite successful he said people do so many things you know he says you should do whatever you want to do that helps you to feel good and to be healthy you should also be healthy he says consider your health it's very important to consider your health of course but if you need a little a little you know a little help here and there he's like a nip and a tuck kind of thing then go ahead and you know do that do what you need to do that makes you feel good he says you should do what, what helps you to feel good about yourself he says and to recognize that if you're doing anything for other purposes for other people or for acceptance or love or that kind of a thing it's not then it's not worth it you have to really ask yourself those questions but okay thank you he says i think you look lovely bridget you are just lovely thank you so much thank you yeah, thank you. And he says, she doesn't sing people. She does not sing. Not at all. Not, not at all. She does not sing not at all. Not at all. <laughs> That's correct. I do not sing. That's right. That's right. So I don't need to worry about my multiple teeth in the way that they are shaped. <laughs> so, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, this is Bridget at Above Life Channel. I've responded to some of your comments about connection. Um, and for you, hopefully that will help you a little bit more as you are connecting for yourself with the afterlife using some of the tools I've been sharing with you again. Right now what's available is there's a video that is actually like a guided meditation to connect with Prince in the afterlife and a video to connect with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife as well. And yes, so there will be a few more. I've already done a couple that I will be sharing in the months ahead as well. Again, I thank you so much for being here. I hope we've inspired your spirit filled you up with some hope. Remember, this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Thanks for watching, you guys.